Talk Show. It's the Daily Talk Show, episode 359. And it's Fat Friday, and I'm surprised we're even doing this. Why are you surprised? Oh, because I, I picked you up f- t- half an hour ago, mm. and you would have never experienced this. Maybe you have. Have you ever driven someone who has been out on the piss and just is off their face, and they're just in the back just going... <sighs> no, uh, no, not really, no. <sighs> and what you're describing that- is my motion sickness. Well, the breathing is someone on the edge who's about to vomit mm. and all you do... I could imagine if you're an Uber driver listening or you're a cab driver, you would have experienced this a fuckload where you just fingers crossed that the person in your car doesn't vomit. Mm. I actually felt like that. Well, you uh, yeah, you turned closed the windows at one point and I had to turn the uh, air con on. Oh, did you? Oh, but the reason, the reason it's all happened is because I worked <laughs> from home this morning and uh, we didn't have any food in the house and so i've just been having black coffee yeah i mean this is such a regular occurrence am i right boys has this yeah. ever have i ever come to work sick you many times where you've complained about how much coffee i know but i've never felt have, sick you can i filter i mean you've no, got, I've got filter. Filter. <laughs> filter coffee no so i think that the uh the learning it's funny that's why i don't drink alcohol well, you wouldn't <laughs> because have there's something filter. fun yeah there's something fun I sort of knew it at the time. It happens every. It happens with food. I'm like, ha ha. Yeah, yeah. On it's your, like, on oh, your tombstone, you know. push it to the limit. Yeah. Do you know I had a moment like talking about tombstone last night? I said to Brie, 2084, and she said, "What's 2084?" I said, "That's where I'm going to die. That's the year I'm dying." That's oh. fucking weird and dark but, and a bit. But then we worked it out. 2084. Did you just all of a sudden you just, I just said fucking? No, I was just like, you know what? I was just like. <laughs> We are talking about death and I just thought of what number comes to mind. I said 2084. Mm. I mean, that's far away. I, I'll, I'll be in my 90s. How many, how, yeah, oh, that's a good innings. That's mm. great. So that's a good – I mean, if I'd said 2022, yeah, not good. <laughs> no. 2084, I've got a good – I mean, what's the – like the people out there – like I've thought some dark shit before and I know it's just my mind thinking dark shit. Mm-hmm. Talked about the devil on my shoulder. Yeah. I think we've all got it. Uh-huh. We've all had those really dark thoughts, but you're like, that's just silly. I'm just fucking... My brain's capable yeah. of thinking weird shit. But I won't put the knife in the toaster. I, I, wa- <laughs> I don't even know if... Is that a thing? Like, there was so many commercial... I remember a TV commercial. Mm. It's like, don't put the knife into the toaster. I've never tried it. Don't know anyone personally who's tried it. Mm. <laughs> seen my dad bloody, f- you know... I've it's definitely definitely nearly burnt my fingers trying to get a piece of toast. It's down. definitely ninety percent men who have yeah. <laughs> stuck the knife in doesn't the toaster happen, that have died. Doesn't happen as much with toasters sorry, toast as bread as it does with other things. I reckon most people who have used a knife uh with a toaster have mm. probably tried to do one of those like pizza hacks <laughs> oh, where you no. put a slice of pizza Mate, or I'll tell you when it's probably happened. Easter time, there's probably a influx of people <sighs> dying, hot cross buns, you squash them yeah. down, put them in the toaster. I believe that's how Jesus <laughs> <laughs> Jesus died. He just fucking uh, his hot cross bun got stuck in. <laughs> Do you think that's what uh, my fucking the story up? Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty much. Um but yeah, I, I don't know if it actually happens. I think there's like circuit breakers and stuff. I wouldn't try it. Mm. Was there a, so big, was there a big campaign in Canada, 3D Dill, around putting knives in toasters? Not that I've ever seen. <laughs> there wasn't enough know. dronks doing it. Maybe it's an Australian thing. It feels like thing. a 90s thing as well. It definitely does. That's what I mean. There was yeah. a lot of hype when we were young. Maybe, mm. like I think our, our house had circuit a circuit breaker. I think it's legal uh, a legal requirement now. You need a board that has a circuit breaker. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, you it was loose. Yeah. And so I remember our house had it. And I told that story while I was cutting through um, paper and I got to a hard bit and I went, it's a bit hard. It was Christmas time. And I just went, oh, and bang, there was a chunk blown out of my fucking scissors because I'd just gone through a cord and there was smoke. Oh. And and the house, you know, turned off. The, I remember the electric- seeing the blue electricity, like having a cable that wasn't good as a kid. Yeah. We actually got net. Did you see the uh, company wide email we got this no. morning? What was the company wide email? Where About testing it? and tagging? Oh, yeah. I f- that was spam. It came to hi at bigmediacompany.com. Do you know, is it, uh, Mr. 97, you're across sort of our oh and s Is it a requirement <laughs> as a small business that we do testing and tagging? No, so here's what. I, here's what Why are you jumping in? Be- because I, <laughs> I immediately <laughs> flagged that as spam. So. Uh, I saw what email address it came to, hi at bigmediacompany.com, which anyone can get because it's on our website. But You're getting confused by two questions though. We've got like people p- 
putting us onto their mailing list, which mm. I have a fucking massive problem with. I've got a, a cleaner. Mission. Cleaner keeps yeah, yeah, emailing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the one. And so they find our email address. Their business is, let's, you know, kid out small businesses with tagged and tested points and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't personal. So it's not, it's, they've just done, their tactic has been, you know, shit loads of outbound yeah. emails hoping that they land something and there's a podcast where they're like, we need to do our tagged and tested. But my question is, isn't so much whether that's spam or not, but are we meant to get it done? No. Nah. No. We, we, why? For what? I mean... Get what done? Tags and... Tag and tested. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, that's... A- exactly. No, but my <laughs> point is... Uh, my point is you're, you're thinking what... It's a rhetorical question. Why... No, why are you... It's not rhetorical. It's not a rhetorical question. But I'm asking you, if you... Okay, go. Ask me the question. Your stance is that we need to have it done and why I'm pushing Why are you so back angry about it? That we don't need it done. No, I'm just voicing okay. what we need... What we don't need so, to have done. Okay, why would you possibly need it done? Yeah. Answer that Is that question. what you're saying? I'm asking you that question. So as electronics or appliances get older, there are likelihoods of uh, the, like, you know, they get weathered or whatever and they sort of become a sa- mm. safety hazard. Mm. And so... Doesn't need to be done. Well, it'd be based on a square meterage of a business or the size of the company. Why are you talking with so much confidence? Uh, because I've <laughs> had leases before. I've had properties where I've, you know, run my business from and there was never a time that we were ever contacted or needed to do that. So I'm just putting my money on it. You, like you don't know and you're pretty certain that we need it done. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just saying like that we need it. It seems like it. it's a, probably not a bad idea. For right? what? For like fire, <laughs> like causing fires, all that sort of stuff. I don't think, I think we've got our fucking... One, I mean... The place is wide. It's a fairly new joint. So I think we're all right. Well, one strategy is that what we could do is because I uh, lent out my boom box to Hay Tiger where Bree works yeah. for about a year and a half. And anyway, we got the boom box back uh, yesterday mm. and I noticed on my boom box cable there is a test and tagged... Oh, yeah. My brother's an electrician. We'll ask him tomorrow when he comes in to install that. I reckon Mr. 97, oh, 3D deal. So there is no legislative requirement yeah. for electrical test and tag under the Victorian OHS regulation and the harmonized WHS regulation. Only prescribe periodic uh, electrical testing and keeping of records for hostile work environments. So I mean, it felt so fucking hostile the way so he was approaching <laughs> I think there. hostile would be like a construction site, uh-huh. um, oh, yeah. stuff where there is. Oh, okay. Live so wire. Um, building companies. Yeah. Um, Amy works for one and it is a fucking nightmare. So they have to have. They have to bring all their tools and they all have to be tagged and tested to, for, to be on the site. But here's Some the thing. Some clients will need us to do it. So if we – go on, sorry. Here's the thing. If they have them tagged and tested on a Monday mm-hmm. and then there's another tagged and tested time, period of time coming up in one month, two months. If that the once a year, I think. If the thing Six months. Yeah. So if you get it done that day, then the next day it fucking flicks a bit and you're like, oh, fuck it, I'll just – so you've gone that. from tag and testing's bullshit to we should be doing it daily? No chance. We're not a building company. I'm saying builders need this shit. I'm over the tag and tested conversation, by the way. There's actually no reason. I just think, yeah, I understand. I know, but the thing is that I, your pushback to it. My pushback is that we don't need it done, and I was okay. right. And you also, but you you argued on the fire detectors as well. Yeah, and I'm still right. We don't need fire um my point is, what are we arguing about? Are we having a conversation That's about law or are we having a conversation about what, what's right? What's right? Yeah. Different conversations. Lead with that. You, need to, you need to separate okay. the conversation. What's right? What's law? Okay. So which one is it? Which one uh, which I, conversation I normally, are we having? Whenever I'm having a conversation, yeah. I'm normally speaking from a place of moral ground or what okay. is right versus... Legal requirements. Okay. Then, but you need to specify that okay. or you just have so every conversation is. I didn't uh, know that you were a judge. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, it, I think it, this happens in conversation mm-hmm. a lot yeah. with people. It's like w- w- which, which part of the conversation are we speaking to? Yeah. But I think that you can get really hell bent on the – it's not legally required but then sometimes I think your stance becomes misinterpreted because – you actually think that having fire alarms would be a good idea. Yeah. But you're so adamant that legally we don't have to have it that it sort of gets mm. lost that you yeah, actually think it's okay. Yeah, because then it becomes about uh, how much time is something going to take. If you're then going, we have to tag and test everything, 
Mm. It's like, fuck, the attention to detail we then need to start applying for mm. across that is is probably not necessary when... When was the last time you ever had anything tagged and tested for any product you've ever had personally? Mm. Never. And when has it affected anyone you ever know? It hasn't. Mm. I don't know anyone. Yeah. And so my point being... It's like you're bringing up an irrelevant fucking point that you're mm. trying to talk about. I mean, you've done a pretty good monologue on it, so it's <laughs> definitely hit some form of wire. Just don't know which one it is. So we did go to uh, Rockwell and Sons. <coughs> yeah, we fucked. Uh, well, I was going to say we fucked it, but Fat Friday. I know people come to the video to see what we've eaten. Which we cleaned up the uh, the shot after the. Uh, you were calling them trolls. Definitely not trolls. Just people with bit of backlash. Mm, not even backlash. Maybe just people who people have opinions, a bit yeah. of feedback, a bit of vis- <laughs> feedback on the visuals. Yeah. And we're talking about the visuals on YouTube. If you've never watched this show, you may have seen it. If, so if you've never watched this show, jump on YouTube. What you're seeing right now will change in the next couple of days. See how many more views we got on that video? Mm. Double. After asking for... Uh, when we said we got a new table, it was a bit of daily talk show... <laughs> And Goss, everyone wants to see what's the new table. The guy, I reckon, yeah. I think you'd be pretty disappointed if you went specifically to look at the table. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and there was some young blokes, which I can't tell if they were being serious or not. They were like, we're calling the Daily Talk Show out for copying our setup. That was completely a joke. Well, I, maybe, <laughs> the, maybe the purpose of, which I learnt yesterday, Zara from Shameless says sarcasm, you're not meant to know it's sarcasm. That's the funny bit about it. Which I think you're good at it because mm. sometimes you're just tweaked and, and are annoyed at something or other times you're actually just pushing the sarcasm part. Yeah. And this is the, I guess, people who are sarcastic. Or well, getting a rise. Fucking, it's hard, yeah. And so, the, but I I couldn't read Who's the sarcasm. Whose phone is that? Who's I, couldn't read, I couldn't read the sarcasm. It's not mine. I couldn't read the sarcasm. It's laptop? It's not my laptop. It's the Apple Mail. Yeah. Was it you? Just be honest. Could, yes. Did you mute your phone Dude, just then? Yes. Okay, sorry. I... <laughs> Anyway, I'm done. And so we went <laughs> we went to Rockwell and Sons, which was the burger joint that's closing in two days' time. Josh fucked Fat Fridays because he drank too much coffee. Yeah, well, the thing was that I actually ca- I actually called Rockwell and Sons and said, hey, can I put an order through? And they said, oh, no, if you want delivery, like for takeaway, they said if you want delivery mm. Or if you want to do takeaway, you have to do it through Uber Eats. Otherwise, you can come here, order it mm. and take away. The amount of time, and th- we've done what I've done a million times, which is go to a restaurant. You get told how long it's going to be. Mm. Normally, if it's it, a breakfast place. Anything that's a very yeah, happens breakfast a lot thing. Of breakfast. There's a lot of waiting for... I don't go out for breakfast. In, in Melbourne, Melbourne, it's anyway. a very... Yeah. You're just waiting fucking 40 minutes to get a table. The amount of times I've said no to waiting, gone off, couldn't find somewhere... It's now 40 minutes into the search. Yeah. And if you just waited, you could have been eating within 10 minutes of sitting down. And so that was, I feel it was a bit of that. We could have, we went there and you went in, said, ah, it's 30 minutes. I was like, yeah, sweet. 30 minute wait for your burger. Well, which, I didn't if say you yes, wait. I said yes, wait. Okay, I, I said yes, wait. Because you came back to the car and said, hey, 30 minutes. I said, yes, wait. Which, and I said, no. Nah. Absolutely not. Which I just means, didn't want because I wasn't going to wait. Like they had no seats for me to sit in. You could come back to the car. I know, but I was just like I sort of I wasn't feeling well. No, and that's so, more to the point. But yeah. the thing was, to be honest, what I thought would have been the outcome, which it hasn't worked out that way. Which is why you're a good business partner. But I was like, let's Uber Eats, eats it, and then I you pushed back straight away, being like, well, we might as well just wait. No, it would have been longer. Would I know, but longer the thing is, Eats it's it. longer, but it doesn't involve me waiting, so I'm okay yeah. with it. If it takes an hour and I'm able to like move things around in the desk, it's okay. But yeah. if it's 30 minutes of sitting there mm. trying to watching people working out whether they push or pull the fucking front door, that was enough. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so, so boys, this is why we haven't had um, – we don't have anything for you for Fat Fries. <laughs> but this is why we have Mr. 97 here because what he does is – Brings in treats. Yes. And he preps for Fat Fridays. Because this is not... I mean, you're not always bringing in treats. No. What, what have you brought in today, Mr. No, well, this, this, was, this was lucky. My brother uh, spent <laughs> a bit of time... It's, yeah, it's all Sam. I uh, hope he works at Rockwell and Sons <laughs> and we've got some burgers. <laughs> no, no. no My brother spent a bit of time um, during the week doing a bit of baking after Dill mentioned a Canadian <laughs> treat. 
A Nanaimo bar. What? Nanaimo bar. Nanaimo bar. Nanaimo bar. It's hard when you say an. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nanaimo bar. It is a. Bar. <laughs> can we guess a. what it is? Yeah, go yeah you can guess. I reckon it it's is. got a Nanaimo bar definitely has a lot of nougat. Yeah, I think it's got biscuit bottom. Biscuit bottom and caramel. Interesting. There's something. Yeah, I think it's a probably like a Moro bar. Can you say the word again? Yeah, that's what, what I'm is it called? That's why I said the caramel. And the okay. Nanaimo bar. Nanaimo how you, bar. How do you spell that? N a n a i m o b a r. Yeah, it's definitely it's it's circular and probably long, and I think it's got nougat. All right, what a, what is it? It's mm, it's more similar to what you were saying, Tommy. It's not round <laughs> at all. Uh, I fucked up. The the, no. the nougat. Am I right about the nougat? No, no. no. Okay, right. so it's <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a biscuit. No, it's got. That's a, what Tommy said. No, I didn't. He's got. He <laughs> said it at a biscuit or a, like a, some kind of a base. Biscuit bottom. Biscuit, yeah. biscuit it's bottom. It's got a base. Are you kidding so, okay, me? So I said a biscuit there's bottom a and bis- caramel. Biscuit base. Anyway, yeah. There's, there's, what there's, is th- there's Has three it got layers. Caramel? No, there's three layers. There's a brownie on the bottom, and then there's a custard filling, and then a layer of chocolate on top. It's not a biscuit yeah. bottom base. I don't care if I was right or wrong. <laughs> I didn't know what enough. it was. But the thing is, I. I wasn't over here going, I'm yeah. fucking right. Yeah, no. I don't really care. Why are you okay. pointing it out that I was, was wrong alongside you? It was just more that I'm actually not annoyed at you. I'm annoyed at 3D Deal being fucking <laughs> dumb about I, it. I would be annoyed if I was 3D Deal for you interrupting it, yeah. him while he's trying to say yeah. what okay. just the fucking to thing is. All right, I'm Any, sorry, I'm anyway, sorry. so <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam was trying to find the recipe for it um, and he couldn't find one on Google, which was... Uh-huh. It surprised me. So he just sort of winged it and, and made it. So, oh, so we're trying a makeshift recipe of an Nanaimo bar. Yeah, you're trying Australian Nanaimo bars. Have you had one yet? Three D deal? Yeah, I have. They're actually really good. Okay, and yeah, I'd love it. You've uh, given them the Canadian tick I've of approval. I've given them the Canadian tick of approval. So people actually make these at home. These are. It's not like a Mars bar. This is something that yeah you, you oh can, yeah you can buy it from the store or make it. Make oh, it I'm so oh, happy! Yeah. Can I yeah. smell it? It's yeah. a it's a very traditional Christmas thing. You would have it around Christmas time, mm. Christmas can say, morning. Can I just say, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm really happy <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like the reason I'm sick is because I haven't eaten. What are you doing? You're already ruining them. No, I'm not. No, no that was already yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to try. It. Do you know what it reminds me of? Mars bar slice. Yeah, it's very it's very. Yeah, much <laughs> something that you'd oh find at, you know, a primary school fate or where you could buy them in slices. <laughs> He's fucked it. Um, they're very thick. Oh. Is it good? Can we eat all of them? Yeah, you can have all of it. <laughs> well, I leave two for dill, but yeah. Wow. You can have two each. Sam, mm. I know Samuel. you don't watch the show and that Mr. 97 will have to give you the time code, <laughs> but this is delicious. Mm. Really good. It's amazing. And... um. This is the first thing Josh has eaten for the day. I oh, know you ate cheese. Well, that was the thing. I needed something. I mean, we could have just had the burgers, which I think everyone would have loved. Can we still do that? Would we? Could we Uber Eats it or no? Yeah, we could. Yeah. All right. I reckon that's a good idea. <laughs> I think be, do you want to do, do put it on Uber Eats now? No. Okay, we'll do it after. Because I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, so these are some of the feedback that we got on the desk, which we've changed the camera angle, which is what I was getting at before. Um, not sold on the new layout. Too far from the camera and a lot of empty space on the table. Miss the close up of your mugs. See, it's if, that's constructive feedback. It's nice. Do you want me to? Mm-hmm. Well, they're so heavily invested, right? So it's yeah. it's great getting that feedback. Yeah. Should I rebut? No, no, no. We can. We'll do a response. This to gonna you. be multi camera. Okay. Just wait. The two of you are too far apart from each other, and you are too far away from the camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was another one. Um, last one. Loving the layout, guys. With the multi-camera set up, this will look amazing. So, I mean, he solved it. I um, haven't, I, it ha, Mr. 97 hasn't put f- who it's from in did the you notes. S- so it was Bernard that last Bernard, time. Yeah. Bernard, shout out to Bernard. Yep. We're bringing that positivity <laughs> to the tapes. Uh, the sorry, Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sorry. What? What for? Because you said Bernard. Uh, Bernard. That's not what you said, though. I said Bernard. What did I, what did I say? No, you said uh, Bernard. 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 But um no. I'm fucking saying yeah, no, it's a bit of a yeah, joke behind fine. it yeah, too. Yeah. I know I just fucked up um Durham. Uh we got that right. Uh but uh, do you know one that I liked that was in our Instagram? Mm. Though uh they said it was looking a little bit uh you're not gonna eat the whole thing. Go on. Uh a bit drive 
slash breakfast show. Did you see that? I didn't know what it meant though. What does that mean? I guess it's just looking like a radio, radio studio, which I don't mind. If we could do that, but a better, mm. like a, a I better mean, version. My, um, the thi- here's the thing. You ask for feedback. You can't help. I think it's human mm-hmm. to fucking just be slightly ticked off at stuff. Even if you're like, yeah, I know. It's just it's me being silly, but mm. it's like things do tick you off. My initial response to that is, send me a radio studio that looks like this. I've never seen one in my life and I've been in plenty. I think it's maybe the <laughs> distance between it and all that sort of thing. But the funny thing is I was out to... Uh, oh, being far away. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I was uh, invited to a book club and uh, I was there and I was getting... We've never had that many YouTube comments before. It was a highly engaged video. Mm. Yeah. And my Apple Watch just kept going off. I just kept reading them. And so I was very distracted through the whole thing. And what were you, what was, what were you meant to be doing? Uh, we were actually trying. I actually hadn't read the book because, well, I was just invited last minute, but they were deciding on what the what the book is, which oh, is going to be oh, okay, okay. the it's boy like the first world. day of the book club. So, so it this wasn't was three weeks into the book club where everyone's read. No, it was three days. weeks. They were all, but that no one liked the book. Oh, they're picking a new one. And so they're picking a new one for the next month. And so I'm sort of at that transitional point for that. Yeah. And what did the conversation, what was the conversation about? For the book? Like just what about, like, about? what, yeah, what, what goes on? It actually on became a lot about food, if you could believe it. <laughs> Who was spearheading the conversation? Well, it was me to start with, <laughs> but it turns out that one of the girls, Erin, loves soup. And she's been making lots of soup. God. I mean, so, this dude, remember how ages ago you're like, we're saying, he, overhearing basic conversation that people have that mm. is just like, oh. Like if I was at a cafe and I was <laughs> listening to someone next to me talk about how they're cooking soup, I'd be like, it was actually pretty get fun. Out of there, dude. We're talking about like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't use lentils that much. Like, oh my God, you should be using lentils. God. That was sort of the. Yeah, lentils are good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all running at a pretty basic level, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's like. It's surface level chat. It's uh, Which I like. Top of the soup yeah, chat. Yeah, but the thing is, it's because we didn't have the book, but we're about to yeah. read, it's like Boy Swallows Universe. Oh, yeah. Fiction, non-fiction? Fiction. Yeah. So. It's not not your cup of tea usually. Well, that's what I thought it would be something fun, something different. I think it's so nice like to try something out of your mm-hmm. wheelhouse. Yeah. So, yes, uh, yesterday after the show we had uh, a big shoot. Yeah. We had uh, a bunch of influencers that were, or content. I don't like calling them influencers. Um, people who have... Uh, spend some time on social media and build up an audience mm-hmm. and are doing cool shit. And they're content creators. Yeah, content creators. I think um, it was women. It was five, six women across the day that we shot videos on. They're like mm-hmm. profiles, Q&A style stuff. I just loved how um, I was thinking and I was talking with Amy on the way home mm-hmm. about self-belief. Yeah. I was saying there's like self-belief isn't the sure equation to success in whatever you're doing it's a part of the equation because mm-hmm. there's heaps of people with no self-belief that have become successful musicians there's heaps that go on to kill themselves because they fucking hate themselves and they've got no, they don't feel good mm-hmm. about themselves so and i look at that and i say it, you know it's quite hyperbolic but it's like that's an extreme example of someone with no self-belief that also is super talented so the talent is what leads them to the success mm-hmm. but then seeing i love seeing this bunch of girls and how each one of them had self-belief translating in a different way. You know, mm-hmm. they're, sh- they're, they're um, sure about what they do and everyone sort of s- said that they didn't like the question of... Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, what do you do? Let's explain. We're know, pretty shit at it as well. I think it's a, it's quite universal. I think it's quite out of the box to be able to say, you know... You know, it's like uh, working out your sales pitch or your elevator pitch. It's like work it backwards. You know, so if you were a, a, a video production company, lead with the solution or the feeling that the solution you provide um, delivers for people. So it's like, you know, when you want to engage people and mm-hmm. you want to capture their attention to make them feel great. Yeah. Well, that's what I do. My video production, so it's like I've been to seminars where mm-hmm. they're just teaching you how to reverse engineer it, reverse engineer that sort of to elevator. To make it more interesting. That pitch, you know. Um, and so I, I always think that 
having it summarized like that can come across a bit gross, mm. which is why I think if you're wanting to actually make connection, most people won't give you the fucking sales pitch because they're like, it's not human really to be like, you know, serving up in this confident manner in every scenario. So well, it's a single it might dimension. Work, it might work up on stage where you are needing to deliver a uh, rock solid 30 mm-hmm. seconds on who you are and not yeah. humming and ahhing. So I get that. But then just across the board when you're speaking to, you know, everyday people. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is too that we're multidimensional. I think what do you do is from the industrial age where it's like I, I screw yeah. the thing onto the thing. Yeah, or number I, five in the picking line yeah. of the mechanics plant. Well, yeah, there's, I think that like future of work and where it's all going is it's like you do multifaceted and I mm. guess that's what everyone had in common, mm. all of the creators that we spoke to yesterday. It's like they don't do a single thing. Mm. It's like you've got to be entrepreneurial and have 10 things going. Mm. But the other thing too, I feel like that I learned from there is the uh, the importance of um, not maybe not community but just uh, it was it was nice seeing all people doing their individual thing supporting one another as well mm. so it's like the conversations that are happening and mm. that sort of support I think was really nice yeah well there's there's the online community and then there's the creator community mm-hmm. you see I mean this is why there's things like meetups and stuff which not don't always work but it's all of the one of the questions that were asked of the people of, was have you made friends online internet friends have you turned it, it was internet it friends qu- into real life friends yeah that's the question it yeah. was like have you ever made any IRL friends on Instagram yeah I didn't want to say, say it exactly how it, uh, I mean <laughs> anyway have you made internet and most of them have because half of them mm-hmm. half of the people that they end up becoming friends with are creators as well yeah yeah so what we're doing it was for a new app called milkshake and they're on instagram go.milkshake but it's um it basically makes it easy for you to uh create like a micro site mm. so if you go onto your uh, instagram account you don't have a website or you might have six mm. different websites you can click on a milkshake yeah. link and the creator can have all their links but also like a bio mm. and all that sort of thing mm. what did so you learn mr 97 as he yawns off camera, being uh, being on on set, uh, probably probably how great the collaboration was between people. Mm. I never realised, I guess, how interconnected everyone was. Yeah, like you look at all these people doing their separate things, but then when they meet up in person, everyone knows each other and they're all mates mm-hmm. and they're all, they've already collaborated collaborated with each other before. So yeah, it was cool seeing that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there was a girl there that we were filming. Her and I grew up in the, you know, knocked around the same areas and I haven't seen her in 15 years. And she said to me, oh, I've seen you everywhere. So it's like I've seen her everywhere too, yeah. online. Mm-hmm. And so you you see how you're just in touch with a bunch of yeah. people, you know, from even if it's one way, even if it's I don't speak to her online, mm. yeah. but I'm just sort of consuming what she does and she does the same for me. And then you see each other, you're like, what's up? Well, it is yeah. nice how to connect been? him. In real life, yeah, yeah, it is. Nice, um, yeah, it's on f- it's sorry, it's it's funny. It's funny just looking at the translation of having you're interacting with them online, but then mm-hmm. that's translated into real life, and you just feel like you actually know them and, and yeah. that you've engaged with them before. Mm. Mm. That was yeah, cool. Well, I think that that's part of the. I reckon that's where I may be not weird people out, but I'm probably against the grain. Which is if I know something about someone, mm. I lead with it. Where I feel like there's probably a vibe that you might know all this stuff about someone based on their online thing, but then you don't really talk oh, yeah. about it. Whereas I'm like, I saw you in Sydney. I saw that you're in Sydney. I saw you did this oh, thing. I oh, saw yeah, that okay. like, whereas I think that a lot of people, it's like, I get the impression sometimes like you'll see someone and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe yeah. you're doing that thing. It's like, you, you saw my Instagram. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. we sort of, for whatever reason, we want to pretend like we don't know all this shit about people. Yeah. Is it like a polite thing to do? Maybe? I think it's just polite people not wanting to feel like, they're intruding yeah. and just ha- keeping tabs on you. Yeah, I mean, we're sharing the content anyway. Yeah, I know. It's weird. But I think you can't – I think it's a wankery thing to assume people know stuff about you. I think Yeah, that, sure. And so that's – I don't think it is wanky because I think we all do it. Like I've had – I remember living in Shepparton and I'd meet people. I knew, the, knew mm-hmm. who I was without being fucking egotistical, maybe slightly, that I worked at the radio station. But you're kind of having these conversations where it's like you know about mm. – 
what I've been doing because you probably like you can you get hints, yeah, little subtle hints, and so I, I'm like, ah, yeah, well, I know it, but and I don't you're never going to lead with that. I it's like if yeah. you're a, if you're a famous person, if you're George Clooney, and you yeah, meet yeah. someone, you're still going to say, "Hey, I'm George." Yeah, 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 yeah. Or do you reckon he says, "I'm George"? Cl- hi, hi, I'm George Clooney. Full name? Don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's own, he's George Clooney. He's not George. Who imagine who calls him George? Could you imagine his how mates? But him at a s- Starbucks. Yeah. So easy. Never has to say his name. Yeah. It's, I mean, some things about fame that would help. Yeah. I mean that's that's one of them, but uh, on Monday it's our three hundred and sixtieth episode. Oh yeah, and so it's gonna be interesting. Uh, we're doing it uh, from Shepparton, yeah, from your studio, from your old studio, yeah. Got the okay for that. Uh, admin's been a little bit annoying today. Mister ninety seven gave me. Can you tell me if you think this is a bit silly? Mister ninety seven gave me a letter. Uh, to or like um, what was it like a stickers and stuff? Yeah, yeah, a letter to yeah. post. Yeah. Yeah. To post, sure, easy. He said, "Can you just uh post this?" Yeah, you walk past the post box every night on the way home. Absolutely fine. And so I was like, "Yeah, cool, man, I'll do it." And anyway, I put it in my bag. I'm like, "There's no stamp on it." Nothing. What do you mean? Of course, there's no stamp on it. Why? Why would you need a stamp on it? They stamp it at the post office. Oh, you're saying you got to go to the post office? Yeah. And so I never agreed to like. Yeah, I'll put your letter in a, a like a, a post box or whatever. That's fine. But don't you think it's a it's a little if you've got a letter and it's like, hey man, do you mind just if you're swinging past, can you just post it? There's no assumption that I've got to buy the stamp. He yeah. Don't you he, think that that was a miscommunication from his end? He's closer to being born than you know we are. So he's, he's younger. You like so he just does, doesn't have the doesn't, experience. He doesn't understand mail. I mean, well, what do you think, Fredo? Deal. We've never used stamps. As in, we We've, have... We have they have had any stickers arrive at anyone's house? Yeah. To be honest, Mr. 97, Josh hasn't done any mailing in this business ever. <laughs> He's outsourced it all. And so have you done I have gone stamps? I have gone and fucking paid for the stamps and done what you're saying, which is, okay, I've got, a, I've got the envelopes, which I, I you know, have some upstairs that then need to be stamped at the post mm. office. And I know this annoys you because I'm sort of out... Of the loop, but this this is a common occurrence, which is, you guys will do a thing. I don't I have any involvement. I wasn't a part of okay. that. Okay, well, you don't have to throw him under the bus. No. But what I'm just saying is, I won't be part of a thing, and then all of a sudden, I'm part of it once. Yeah. And then I'll be like, are you telling me we don't have stamps at the office? Which <laughs> yes. I understand the annoyance. I understand that I've been doing this for six months or whatever. Josh has to go Who's to the post. He's been doing it for six months. Ninety-seven. Yeah. So, um, what did you do? Is more to the point. When well, you it hasn't been sent yet, because we were going to send it uh, after we got Rockwell and Sons burgers. I did. Know that. Or before, but so we haven't. So we need to collect the three hundred and sixty camera I saw on the Express. Oh, we got it. Uh, yeah. So it says it's uh, in Abbotsford at oh, the amazing. Pe- waiting okay. for pickup. So we know that the GoPro Fusion. Thanks to our friend Trevor Long at EFTM, yep. we're going to be able to do the 360 in the studio. So that's good. You ha- you seem happy because you weren't yeah. expecting that. Yeah, 360 of our. I still want a backup. I still want us to film well, it. Well, we'll film it on the C200 as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I want. Yeah. Um, so if we can get a backup of that and we film it in 360. But can yeah. we just? I remember uh, back in the day when I was young, and Mum and Dad would just have a big like a box of stamps that are on stickers and you would just... Yeah, it's because they're old as fuck. But can we do that? Yeah, we can. I mean, we have a purpose for it. If we didn't have a business that so- sent out merch... Mm. Which we do. Which we do. Which yeah. I, ne- I, I think, like... Can we just spend $100? Oh, we'll have heaps. How shit. many is that? A hundred. It's, what? A do- it's a dollar per sticker. So that's yeah, which you don't need to get a hundred pack. We get a 50 pack or... You know, we get a hundred pack and then we get envelopes... Um, sleeves and stuff like we can build out a little merch section <laughs> that can just be fast shipping but I, yeah it's, it is a big media company thing to do yeah can you actually have can you legally have your own stamps you can get custom in Canada you can get like custom stamps yeah I've heard you some of the kind of order your own so, kind so of a thing. with the queen there's a bunch like, of digital ones but then you yeah. need a printer and yeah. so there is like a, oh that was the other that was the issue yeah it's annoying because I asked Bree to print something we just gave away our old printer yeah to Bree's sister and she had a very good point I said we don't have a printer and she said I thought you do have a printer she said do you mean you don't have ink yeah I was like yes 
But I, I've never actually. The funny thing is, I've never bought ink. Mm. I've bought many printers, mate. Because it's normally well cheaper. It's, it's so horrible. How the fuck have we got to this point? To as in, as a business, as a world, <laughs> as a pop. How do we? Because why is ink more expensive than the printer? Than the fucking printer? It doesn't yeah. make to sense. To get the ink it? for the printer I bought, which was four hundred dollars, it's mm. something fucking outrageous. It's an amount that I could go and buy another printer. It wouldn't be yeah. as good as the one I've got, because but I don't need the scanner and the bullshit so stuff we st- that comes with it. It's funny. We're almost like every single time we just buy a new printer, it feels like we're getting cheaper and cheaper printers to the point where we're going to have the shittiest printer. But you don't want to have to do yeah. that. That's, that's we don't, What I was saying to Bree is I'm like, I think we would, we're going to, I would like to see us uh, have a really nice printer. <laughs> Why? Well, just because I don't think you deserve a nice printer because I don't think you <laughs> would upkeep a printer. But if it's you a, don't deserve if it's a, a dog if you're not going to groom. But the if dog. it's a really nice printer, then it's one of those things like I can just imagine like a really easy yeah. toner, you know, like There's a big block thing that you just yeah. put in rather than having to worry about yeah. like oh we're we're, we're out of magenta. Yeah. What the fucking who prints magenta? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. The thing is, we just need to get this company big enough that you can have someone else doing all of this mm. shit for you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's cause if you don't do it yeah. and you're annoyed that it hasn't been done, yeah. most people, everyone else doesn't want to have to do it either. One of my favourite uh, stories is when I worked in a government agency. It sounds cooler than it was. Yeah. But uh, a lot of sort of middle management and there was uh, my manager would print out every email he got yeah. and he'd put it in a folder. I've heard of this. Um, Candy got in trouble when we were working in too many bits of paper, too, too much printing. Well, and uh, because they, uh, like the thing is, if you work for a business, it fu- it's costing them money every time you print. You're printing money. Do you remember <laughs> That's exactly um, what you're doing? So if you fucking print every email, pull your head in. Do you remember? Um, just and you quickly, don't need to eat that, dude. I was thinking we about should, it. We should eat. I've, got, f- I've got more. Oh, you do. He's, got, he, I think he's more concerned wasn't about, about more. It wasn't that I needed more. It was that <laughs> I'm looking out for my mate who nearly vomited in my car and he's just nearly smashed half a it was cage. Because these I had these to are like nice and fresh though. I think you'll oh, like Oh, this. there's yeah. something else. I'm yeah. sorry I put my fingers all over that. So these are macaroons or macarons? Oops. These are mac- macaroons. Um, I've had them in France where they're from. Uh, Why did you say it like that? I got a broken one. That's fine. That's right. I crushed it with the lid when I was putting it in this morning. Uh... This Fat Friday is fucking pear shaped. Lemon. Is it? It's lemon, yeah. Mm. Mm. Not a fan. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> Are you not a fan no. of lemon? <laughs> not a fan of lemon or not a fan? No, of I'm lemon? not a fan of lemon. Like, I'm not a fan of like lemon cake. I'm not a fan of that's, orange that's, cake. Citrus that's cakes? Right Definitely not a fan. Appreciative, Sam. <laughs> not a fan, though. About like, 16% of our audience prefer lemon over mango. For what? Uh, yogurt. I ran that poll about two weeks ago. Is that a ago. thing? What lemon? Lemon. It was a protein in yogurt. Yeah, it was a protein yogurt. Mm. But I can't actually stomach any of them now because it. I left it on the table for too long, and it goes a real. What do you mean too long? How long? It like, fifteen minutes. I mean, where do we get these things as humans? Like, where do we get? So I tell you, whey protein. How do they come up with that? No, whey is protein is extract from milk. So it's like a so you, this is why you can get whey protein that doesn't have dairy in it. It's because it's extracted from milk. I mean, milk. L- not so much literally, but how do you know that? How do you know to do that? How did they know that? Fuck, we'll take the milk and then we'll make it a powder. I mean, how did they know to build a roadcaster? How did they That's know true. to put all the bits and pieces how did they together? Know, how, how did they? Who who thought of drinking milk from a cow? I mean, that's yeah. a sort of a classic who thought one, isn't of it? putting a penis in a vagina. That's a fucking literal. Like, how yeah. do we work out how we procreate, other than the feeling? Mister like Ninety Seven looks shocked. He's only just worked out. That's, <laughs> that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. No, but who seriously, think about that, that. The birds of the bees would come think out about now. That. Who worked out? It's like, yeah, man. Yeah, I can't believe it either. <laughs> who worked out that it was ejaculation into a vagina that actually made us? At what point, like, mm. yeah. go, 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 like fucking cavemen, if, yeah. you, if that's where you How many holes from. did someone fuck before they worked out? <laughs> <laughs> How many years did it take for them to work out that doing that and then, you know, feeling that fucking good feeling was the thing? That, uh, Amy and I were like, we had this discussion the other day. We're like, what the fuck? 
Did it happen after sex? Was it? No, it didn't happen after yeah. sex. It's a pretty but funny. It's, but it's it's, it's funny. F- yeah. It's very fucking funny. It is cr- pretty crazy to think that what happens as a result of sex. Yeah. I mean, Amy's got an um, app now and she can, and you basically put in your, uh, when you had your last period, uh-huh. you probably put in a few periods and then it will give you like the times that you're, your um, period prediction uh, ovulating so you can mm-hmm. see when you could fall pregnant uh-huh. and it even goes as far as telling you when uh, it could be but high chance of it being a boy and high chance of it being a girl and so really? yeah based on what um the science yeah there's something about <laughs> I, I don't know i don't yeah no, but i think i remember hearing can you google this uh mr nice you you're really not eating the whole thing i'm going to have one of these and then i'm going to stop have the, my to last the bit have my bit no, i don't want you grubby seconds um the uh, I remember hearing Steve Irwin talk about he wanted a girl mm. and so they would put ice packs on his balls. This was on Andrew Denton's Enough Rope. Uh, but he would put ice packs on his balls because it was, or maybe it's the other way around, it was a boy. But basically the temperature of your nuts <laughs> would determine whether you had a boy or a girl. I think it may be the other way around. I think athletes tend to have sweaty nuts and they normally have girls. Yeah, okay. IT professionals probably more boys. Is that right? Okay, so when icing your balls for <laughs> between 30 minutes, like for a 30-minute time period for mm-hmm. two consecutive weeks, so it's 30 minutes a day for 14 days. Icy um, balls for oh, 30 minutes a day. It, it lowers the scrotal temperature. By about twelve degrees. Yeah, sure. Because you got ice in your nuts, and, and, and as a result, sperm Science. sperm counts nearly tripled. Some showed little improvement on semen quality. Some showed dramatic improvement. That's why us Canadians are ballers. <laughs> ballers, because we're cold because of for the half cold, year. cold nutted yeah. humans. So I mean, that's talking about sperm count, which is but f- doesn't which say it doesn't, doesn't tell reference us whether it's anything. A gender. Can you look up gender and scrotum temperature? Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah, I mean, so, so these apps, I don't know how they work. It just said that, but I saw it last night. And I saw that it was like last night if we had sex and did that cool thing that you need to do to have a baby, it, it would have um, high chance of it being a girl according to the Really? App, which would be lovely. I'd like a little bubba, a little baby girl. Cooling, cooling the testicles, having cold <laughs> showers or wearing loose-fitting clothing may be beneficial for a boy. Uh, for a boy for now. A boy. Yeah, no. So I think I fucked up. I think what happened was no, no, you, uh, he had You were right. In. Athletes have yeah. hot balls. <laughs> yeah, hot balls. So they have girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so if you want a boy, yeah. keep your nuts cold. Keep your nuts. Isn't that interesting? Do you think that would change things? I mean, I'm just but thinking your about strategy? my nuts. I've had a boy and have they been cold? I don't know. I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm Based surprised. on the that temperature thing, I feel like you'd be more of a... More likely to have a girl. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you are sort of in IT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But I do box jumps. You know? uh-huh, which is good for testosterone. Anyway, so we've got the uh, we've got a road trip that uh, we're doing for Monday and Tuesday and all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, the first couple of shows next week are going to be on the road. Here from the road. And so do we? I didn't realise this. I had said that it was regional Victoria. It Mr. is. Mr. 97 pointed out it's actually New South Wales. Oh, regional Victoria where we're doing... Monday's show, which is Shepparton, mm-hmm. and then we're crossing the border, baby. We're yep. going to a place called Leeton, and small town. Um, uh, our client said, I said to him, how many people there? And he said 20, it was like um, 25,000 or something. Um, and jo- It's pretty big. I'm just, talk- we're just talking. Just talking very- about my nuts right now. <laughs> no, we're talking about <laughs> the slice. I've got them out and I'm icing them. Very- I, I want, Definitely I want, youtube.com forward slash the daily talk show. No. What is the, what's the, what's the yellow bit? Is that nougat? No, the yellow bit is typically supposed to be just uh, like a cream custard. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I think Sam has put a, it's like a coconut cream. Like yeah, some it's, type it's of like coconut. It's like butter, coconut. sugar, coconut yeah. mixed mm-hmm. together. And it's amazing. It's very good. It's really good. What anyway. do we think about going to Sydney? Yeah. For, for what? Am I still telling my story? Yeah. You were saying about <laughs> going to New South Wales and stuff? Uh, no, nah, it doesn't matter. It's all good. Anyway, let's uh, wrap it up. We got. Do you want to go? Do you do we want to go to Sydney or no? Too far wh- from Leeton? Wh- where? No way! It's, it's seven hours from where we're going. <laughs> mm. 
But we're driven half the way there nearly. No. Nah. We're close to Canberra. Could we go see Diabetic Nissan? No, it's inland. We've got, like I said, this is near Wagga. Okay. What were you going to say? I want to hear about the population thing. I'm sorry. Oh, I said something. I, I thought I heard him say something like 25,000. And he's like, no, two and a half thousand. Mm. So it's a, it's a small town um, up in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're going to be. And we'll do our show from uh, the apartments that we've hired. Yeah. Uh, I got us all beds, guys. Not in the same room. You've all got your own room. I was sort of excited about like separate beds, but being in the same room. Definitely not when you fucking listen to podcasts <laughs> and the same one every night. But there's something nice because you, you can talk about it afterwards. No, not really. I'm pretty much wanting to go to sleep I when was I'm happy. in bed. Last night I was so fucking happy because I was listening to an audio uh, podcast mm. and then halfway through Bree's like, oh, who's Letterman talking about here? I was like, She's listening. Yeah, I was like, you listening, babe. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Well, she's right next to you and you've fucking got it on loudspeaker. It's yeah. the most annoying thing. Do, do you know what you should be talking about loudspeaker? Do you Brie? ask her if you can do it? You say, Bree, do you mind if I do this now? Or you just it's a, no, it's, it's, a, a, it's like your it's thing. A, it's a it's thing. thing. It's, it's a thing. thing. <laughs> okay. Do you ask every time you take a snack from the fridge? Uh, <laughs> You're thinking what, about it. No. <laughs> you don't ask, Amy. I don't, What's a I don't snack from the fridge. I re- like when I'm home. Like when am I at home? I don't really snack from the fridge. What have you got in the fridge? start snacking from the fridge. It isn't quite a... I actually get... Like I I think about people who are like, oh, let's fucking just before bed have a little snack. Any of you guys like a midnight snacker? I'm a huge midnight snacker. Uh, Really? No, 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 no. no. Midnight snacking makes sense for you because you're usually still up at 12. Yeah. You, you well, I mean, like, if, if I'm going to go to bed... Which I'll just means eat, you're a midnight snacker, but... I'll eat something before I go to bed. For us, it's yeah. more like... weird for me, because I would have been asleep for three hours. Woke up. <laughs> no, no, that's the weird thing. I've done that before, though. Mm. And like, you don't smoke weed? No. I'm just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's been definitely times where I've had a few... Like, I've gone out for dinner, had a few drinks, had yeah. like two or three drinks, come home, yeah. slept for like three hours, wake up, it's like 3.30. In the morning? In the morning, go downstairs, get a glass of water, and then just have a bowl of cereal. And go back Interesting. to Interesting. Real pothead behaviour <laughs> minus the pot. Amazing. When when we drive, Bree was saying, oh, you and Tommy are going to take turns. Yeah, I can drive. I, I think it's because it's my car. You can. I was thinking about it. I was like, I'm actually just happy to drive. You can. I've punched out Melbourne to Sydney like fucking by myself. Mm-hmm. Same And day. now we're doing fucking, I go is halfway hard? and then this you do the rest to Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is hard. What, what you got it, once you drive to Sydney, Josh, you do realise that there's the drive back. Mm. So there's another fucking 12 hours. Yeah. That's the one bit. very annoying. Anyway, it's the Daily Talk Show. Hi at the dailytalkshow.com is the email. I'm trying to think if there's any other admin. Surely we have some more admin for a Friday. Anything else happening? 3D Deal's been working on the website. That's coming along nicely. Uh, Lots of lovely inbox messages on Instagram. I will say we're uh, we're very, very close to a 1,000 people Mm. on our Insta account. And so I'd like to see that tick over. Yeah, thank you to Shannon. 996 or something. How nice was Shannon's message? Yeah, Shannon's was lovely. We've received a, f- a bunch of people mm-hmm. writing to us. There is that uncommon episode that we did with Jordan Michael Ladies, mm. episode oh, 120. Yeah. Great oh, yeah. feedback. Hold out. That. Oh, great. Great feedback, yeah. Hold yeah. on to your hats, which is good to Derek's podcast. Yeah. He said that it was coming out yesterday. Yeah, it's I did coming a big, out. big push on social media. <laughs> it should be out today, though, but we, that's a podcast where – him and Dan Lee talk about uh, fatherhood and parenting mm. and stuff. And so we, we talked about a bunch of stuff. Absolutely uh, love that song that we're playing yesterday. Um, Old Town Road. Putting on the horse. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. I mean, that's what it is one of the most popular songs at the moment. Mm. Lil Nas. Yeah. It's so good. I love it. I reckon it's, it's going to do big things for country music. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know if that. <laughs> It's a rap song that has a country twang to it because Billy Ray Cyrus is in it. But, no, I get it. I get it. It's a good song. I love it. I, I, I'm very surprised at how much I love it mm. for the song that it is. But it's like if it is – it's the – it's it's a pop phenomenon song. Like that's why you're into it. Mm. This is like – I was saying to Mr. Nice M, there's – maybe even on this show, it's like there is songs that shift culture – that come out every six months. And this is a big one. Not not as much shifting. There's no real dance to it. But like there's a bunch of these that have come out that like have this huge takeoff. You had a – sorry, I'm still eating. You had a fight with the um, makeup artist, hair and makeup artist yesterday, Kat. 
Oh, we were talking about... Um, Miley Cyrus versus Taylor <laughs> Swift in regards to yeah. country. You said Miley Cyrus is more of a country music star At heart, than Taylor Swift. Because yep. her dad's Billy but Ray Cyrus. But Taylor Swift is actually a country music yeah. star. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So you're backing down on that? Because you're pretty... S- no, sometimes I just like fucking did, getting revved up. Just. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I was, I was yeah. listening to that. Yeah, it's a bit much. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. it's a daily talk show. Hi, the daily talk show dot com is the email address. I'm off to call me nuts. Yeah, call you nuts. <laughs> on uh, we'll have a few ice packs in the car, <laughs> yeah. and on thirty uh, minutes too long to cool the nuts. I'd they'd fall off. They'd tuck back up into me gooch. You know, they'd do something. <laughs> anyway, uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> On Wednesday, uh, the studio will look very different, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, uh, we won't have the sign yet and shit, but it's I'm a work in progress. I'm trolling. Sick yeah. trolling on the studio. We'll, we'll see you Monday, guys, <laughs> from Shepparton in Victoria. See you guys. See ya.